Hello everyone. We have with us Dr. K Mukund, a senior cardiologist who has practiced for more than 40 years in the field of cardiology and more than 30 years as interventional cardiologist. He set up the first cath lab in Manglo at Omega Hospital and was the first in Manglo to perform coronary angioplasty. He also headed the team that conducted the first bypass surgery in coastal Karnataka and Kerala. Dr. K Mukund was also instrumental in establishing the first CT angiography center in Karnataka and Kerala in the year 2006. He is currently actively pursuing preventive cardiology while still continuing interventional cardiology practice. Welcome Dr. K Mukund. Thank you. Doctor we all know that uh, most common symptom of heart attack is chest pain but is heart attack alone the cause of chest pain or are there any other reasons for chest pain as well There are so many other reasons one can get chest pain other than the heart you have the lung in the chest you have the esophagus which is foot pipe and uh, in the neighborhood is the stomach in the upper abdomen it can also arise from the chest wall it can be from the bone while uh, heart attack pain cannot wait others can wait that's why the emphasis on uh, chest pain and heart attack so most people uh, they delay treatment for heart attack thinking it is gastritis what is your take on that the most common grave error done by people is dismissing chest discomfort as gas what you see as uh, somebody suddenly collapsing is what has been cooking earlier in the form of discomfort which is patient uh, does not recognize as heart attack as possibly a heart attack and uh, only when he collapses then you realize that you have missed a heart attack so most important thing is that those who are in the vulnerable group men about 30 women about 40 should always be conscious of the possibility of heart attack and take an ecg which is available everywhere and uh, rule out heart attack by one ecg sometimes you may have to repeat so then uh, what are the classic symptoms of heart attack how do you know you are having a heart attack heart is in the left side of the chest but the pain is in the center of the chest it's a crushing type of pain which is very typical of uh, heart pain it can radiate to the neck to the jaw sometimes the left arm rarely to the right chest and right arm sometimes it can be in the upper abdomen which can masquerade as uh, some abdominal indigestion what is important is that to not to dismiss this as non cardiac and then those who are in this risk group take an ecg and rule out anything to do with the heart today you can send the ecg to any expert and get an opinion so then uh, does it differ in men and women the symptoms of heart attack we have what's called as a typical heart attack symptom of pain in the center of the chest of a crushing type sometimes burning sometimes uh, it may be vomiting sometimes it may be dizziness but in women most of the time it is in the form of a breathlessness or tiredness or fatigue and pest chest pain as such may not be there so it is necessary that women with vulnerable especially diabetics have a high index of suspicion for heart attack and take ecg whenever they have some discomfort and it is easy i've heard that diabetes patients when they have heart attack they can have a silent heart attack what is the meaning of this doctor most of the time the silence is because they remain silent about their symptoms and uh, it can be silent because it's not typical if you have a high index of suspicion you will pick up the odd symptom symptoms so doctor we'd like to know what is the reason for what what is the cause of heart attack what happens in the vessels that supply the heart everybody knows that uh, heart attack is due to block but there are two types of block one is gradually growing another is abruptly occurring the gradually growing are the ones due to deposit of cholesterol it takes years for it to gradually grow and close the artery whereas a clot formation over this pre-existing incomplete block 
abruptly closes the artery and results in heart attack. So it is the clot which is the final event which results in a heart attack. What is the uh, definitive test for diagnosing heart attack? We have various tests which uh, including blood tests which takes time. The most useful and uh, you know definitive test is ECG. Entire treatment is based on the findings on the ECG. If you don't find changes in the ECG, either it is a pre-infarction status, before he gets a heart attack, you can have normal ECGs. And over the next hours, the ECG will show up as the block progresses. There are also situations rarely that the vessel involved is very small and it may not reflect in the ECG. What is important is the what we call as clinical suspicion and typical what is uh, in a person who is vulnerable for a heart attack with typical symptoms. You can almost say whether he has a heart attack or not and you wait for the ECG changes to start the definitive treatment. What are the treatment modalities that is available to treat heart attack? The most important step that is required is to remove the block. And there are two types of process by which you can open the vessel. One is clot busters, the other is angioplasty. Clot busters course over angioplasty by simply, by virtue of being simple, quick, and can be administered on the spot, wherever there is an ECG. You don't have to wait even for a blood test. Whereas an angioplasty requires that you reach the place of angioplasty in a tertiary care, what we call as hospital, and get the team ready to operate on him, I mean angioplasty, in the cat lab. These logistics uh, take time as compared to simply an intravenous injection, which can be given as soon as the ECG is taken, wherever the patient is. The only thing that is uh, required is the drug should be made available. So once you give the clot buster, is it mandatory that you undergo angioplasty after that? The immediate job is done because the clot buster opens the artery within one hour. But then clot busters open only the clot component of the block, which has caused the heart attack. So you are through with regard to saving the muscle, which is under you know, geopardy in that heart attack event. Depending on the level to which the clot busters has opened the artery, you can decide on the need for a angioplasty electively. That means you don't have to rush and all the commotion risk that is involved in an emergency procedure is avoided and uh, angiography can be done the next day or subsequent days and uh, most of the patients will be left with some residual block which one would like to open to normalize the path otherwise he can also continue with medicines after except a few where the what you call as a residual block can be still high as high as 80% and you would like to open the block. But the emergency event is managed effectively by clot busters.